on, so it's a bit of a middle ground for them. It's a bit of a spicy one in a best of one, though. I think what's really interesting as well is that, look, we've talked about the JBA interview, uh, and one thing that is kind of really prevalent, just watching him play, is his overextensions. Sometimes he can get punished, and I don't actually think that's going to come into play in this matchup, because Red Canis, uh, stylistically, the way that they like to play is by getting incredibly aggressive in your face. JBA having those aim fights, it could be really interesting. What a dynamic to kick things off of. Nuke, our first map here. The Red Cannons and Wild Card. A lot at stake. And Red Cannons starting on that CT side. That's such a boost. Yeah, they'll be very happy with that decision. Maybe part of why the veto went this way. I mean, if they floated it, they might get that juicy CT side start. Outside presence early. And Nithin strikes first blood from top of silo. Gets information as well out from Red. He wants more. Look, two players have made it now secret. Slight is just trying to convert, but the bombs made it down. There hasn't really been any rotations at the moment for Red Can. It's Nifen is more than happy just to keep taking these fights. And whilst he's doing that, not only is he splitting up Wildcard, he's slowing them down. Yeah, he's really wasting a lot of time. And the USP in these fights, you tend to favor, despite the Glock feeling particularly potent in CS2. He's about to get swung on though, and this is where it's going to get very difficult for him to stand up. Double Glock. Gonna take him down. And he got the bomb out towards Garage, and there's a lot of CTs poking out from every single angle. JBA got to see a bit of that mechanical prowess. One kill comes through. He's very separated from his teammate, and well, now very separated. Slight like nice tap, but can't get it done. Venom Zero swings, and Red Cat is get the pistol. Yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate for Wildcard. You can start to kind of see the nerves even in this first round. The fact that the bomb goes first out of Garage after they get the kill one towards Knife, and they think they can take space beyond that. But by the amount of time he's wasted, Red Cannons are in the perfect position to just swing as a unit. I think that the fact that you get the bomb dropped so far in the open is uh, a disaster sign for Wildcard early on. And from there, the rest of the CTs can just pincer upon it. There's no way out. It's really interesting pistol approach to the T side, right? Because normally you want to play very pack mechanically, kind of put a lot of pace to it. But that felt like very much they wanted to go for aim duels outside, which is obviously a little bit tricky against USPs at long range. I think I get another opening kill. Seven Slot presents himself at red. A lot of SMGs in the feed. JBA does get one back with the Glock. Has the bomb, so there is a pathway down to B. Potentially, you know, a plant here, if he just keeps going, would be a huge boon, but he really wanted that MP9. That reload's been heard as well. We can see Venom Zero immediately communicating to his team that he's actually paused for four, and as a result, there could be a player that is top lobby. That's where Sonic currently resides, and they're so separated. Really hoping just for a kill, but won't get one. Venom Zero collects, and that's a lot of money being made. Every single kill currently going on an MP9. So for JBA, it's just a case of, again, trying to get that extra bomb plant money. Yeah, it feels like that decision there is more about, you know, how can we potentially win this round versus how do we get the bomb down and get that extra cash right? Obviously couldn't have known that the site was completely clear, but either way, no one goes about as you expect. The battle for ramp is, is going to be very interesting. Obviously, we've mentioned JBA. That's where he likes to, to play typically on this T side. But for Red Canids, it's Davideus. And it's the star power that he brings. Obviously, replacing Bartan on this roster, who, who then went over to Legacy. And he offers up much more firepower. And Davideus used to play ramp as well for 9Z. So this feels really comfy for him. It's going to be a real test of wildcard, and they're going to group as a unit. Just a, a five-man lean over towards these smokes. Nifen just trying to play on the edge of it. Stannis Law only gives it a cursory glance. So that's the MP9 grabbing one. They need to start to accelerate. Fortunately, there's a trade. Wildcard are down. Yeah, it's a huge amount of info. Nifen's done everything he needed to do. Gets a kill. Spots at least three going down secret. Destiny gets destroyed, but Davidea strikes for two. Keeps it even. That is all the defenders down here, so the bomb will get planted by Slight. JBA is taking a forward position too. Great Molotov. Forced to the right-hand side. And Slight with a beautiful tap, but then swings right. Bit of a mistake, and Hardzow will capitalize. 
I think this is, again, you just look at the inexperience of some of these players. Obviously, we've already highlighted the stakes here. You lose a couple of games, you are eliminated. There's no contention. These qualify through to the major. They set themselves up perfectly there. Sure, it's a little bit difficult because you've got so much utility in your pockets there, wildcard, but where they get caught out by the MP9 at red, they just want to take the space and they want to accelerate onto the bomb site to try and get rid of these rotations. And in the two versus two, Slight finds the opener and he's just jiggling with his gun out. That's what it should be. Instead, it's with a bottle of flame and now JBA is completely left on his own. Fantastic adjustment from Red Cannon to retake successful. And now the T-Woes continue for wildcard. That was a really nice tap from Slight there. Right? You know, gotta give him credit for that one. Sam's going fast, straight on out. Slows down for a moment. Now he's gonna push through the smoke and he's looking everywhere, but didn't find any of the targets. There was a world where there were two players exposed to him. That flashback absolutely devastated his approach into the site. And now you start to wonder, look, sure, four rounds in, four rounds deep. This is going to be a 4-0 start, flawless for the South American squad. But for Wildcard, think about what you've tried. Spacing towards ramp was kind of dismayed by a couple of players swinging. You've gone outside with smokes and you've been shut down ultimately by the bomb site. And then here you've gone for a faster change of play. You've, it feels like you've tried every single dimension in the first full rounds. You've shown that you're, you can just have a wide variety of variations, but when you've been shut down and there's not really any opportunities presented to you, it can feel quite demoralizing. Yeah, I think this round, I mean, you, you just got to try a fast day early. So at least it's a good kind of read on the, on the setup, but yeah, kind of falls flat in its face. I do like the wild card, or at least attempting a lot of different variations early on. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's a good amount of variations early on. But the issue you've got is how do you kind of get rid of this. And for Wildcard, look, we know that there's two coaches on board, right? You've got, yeah, Hor you've got Horvey, that is more your, your stats guy, more analytical based was with this team since its inception. And, you know, then you've got Wardell, who, who is going to be probably the guy just standing behind them. Just kind of motivating them just a little bit. The conversation is very vocal indeed. It's just about settling them down. Because sure, it's been a, a little bit of a rocky start, but there's still plenty more rounds to play. Obviously, CT side nuke is uh, increasingly favorable for red cannons, but at the same time, wild card, like you've shown good spacing in towards B at the very least. If you just use your utility a little bit to kind of disguise where you're going initially in the interim, then that could just be definitely a position of power. I don't really come into the, the conversation too much in round five with just the Tech Knights. Ardell's going to have a little look outside. Diagonal smoke's deployed. Sonic's going to be walking around them, and this HE won't quite reveal him. Gets a little bit of information that there's nobody kind of close to proximity. See a Molotov being set up, and another HE blows. This time Sonic is out of the server. Now they're going to accelerate. In through Squeaky Destiny, no issues spraying them down. Tech nines, unfortunately, not finding much purchase. I thought with the AWP, another interesting conversation point for this squad. Has been statistically the lowest performer. Struggling a little bit to hit these shots. You might actually get run down. No, it does eventually find it. An infinite dealt with by Destiny. So they managed to weather the storm, don't lose a single body. Yeah, a knife on one of those. IGLs that has kind of taken the Fallen-esque approach, has really just taken inspiration from him, like the majority of the South America scene, where you're in-game leading, but you're also warping at the same time. This is just really easy. It just feels like wild card. They're going a little bit prematurely before the grenade, slightly before everyone is in the right position to go. Another chance. Light gets the AWP out. And Stanislaw's strong. Not quite straight down. No smoke, really, to, to give him coverage on that one. Obviously, he had the Ford spawn, but 
Maybe if you'd be able to get straight into the van, you might have made it. Regardless, they're going to accelerate onto ramp. And there is an opening here. The player is already down on the B bomb site. Look like that for the radar at the very least. Yeah, we can see. Tucked on through. Actually, two bodies down there. They're fully aware of what this space on ramp entails. Wildcard decides they don't really want to test this. Yeah, this is better though from Wildcard because now you've taken map control away from red candidates and now you're redirecting your attention elsewhere. You're creating pressure on a different area of the map to try and guarantee that these players don't immediately rotate. Knife them. This is all about timing. Have a look outside. Infinite. A player that's really gone under the radar for Wildcard has been incredibly impactful in his rifle in this time. Won't have anything to sing about in round six. Back to ramp they go. That's the only piece of space they've now got. They don't need to budge down here, though. Destiny's going to regroup. Vidius over towards single. Going to get smoked off. Oops, the door. Oh, they still open backwards. It's not been changed quite yet. And walking on through. Oh, Destiny's taken down. But that's a perfect swing on through. Two kills will be enough. Sonic has to come up clutch. One versus three. Time is low. Has to stick to the plant. And Nathan just walks on through. Doesn't even allow the bomb to go down. Yeah, that's really unfortunate there for Wildcard because it feels like this is the first time they've actually set themselves up for a proper mid round. A lot of utility being used all the way, every single stage. But it just doesn't quite pan out. And you've got the, the liberties now of. Red Canids, where they feel so confident they can just start walking through these smokes. It's just so easy for Davideus. Uh, from there, the rest of the team can swarm. Yeah, they're really not having to stress too much, are they? Nathan's just openly taking doors outside. Been no real punish so far. I feel like. This is space you can punish, and he does miss his opportunity. He managed to get in towards main, Venom Zero. He get caught off guard here. Oh, Infinite can't quite convert the kill to Tech 9. Now the rest are going to burst through. And in from the heavens, there's support. Hards out, doubles up. Sonic gets himself an AWP. Misses his chance, and now one more kill will be his. That's all it's going to be. And this is why we said in the pregame that we were really surprised that Nuke was even allowed this far deep in the Vita, even allowing it for Red Cannons to be in a position to pick it in the first place. Wildcard make the decision to go here instead of Vertigo. It's a map that they've got somewhat of a success on, but not many reps. You compare and contrast that Red Cannons, they've got a, an okay win rate. It's about 50-50, but they've played it a lot more times than Wildcard. Worried about the kills as well. Stan, infinite, yet to uh, post full of goose eggs right now on wildcard. You don't love to see it. Oh. And infinite won't get a chance. He's first frag into this round. It's even just there though. I mean, you, you've thrown a garage smoke, you've thrown the diagonals, but you're peeking over the top by red before it's even bloomed. You don't need to play this proactively to try and get a kill. Nathan's not really had to, to work too hard out here, has he? No. Well, he's got the smokes, fires a few shots. Some, he, he's missed like three. But he's not getting punished at all for any mistake he's making. I feel like the, the real issue you've got is that Wildcard have got a strong call and it almost feels like it's out of spawn. Okay, this is the area of the map that we want to take. But then once you've got that control or if things don't go to, go to plan, there isn't really sort of a backup. So they're here in secret, they fight back over at main. You've got a player this time in lobby, so you can crunch. Instead, they're walking through these smokes to try and eliminate Nifen, but he's got a tight line. It's going to be difficult to deal with. 30 seconds. The bomb's only just been picked up. But they have to go through main. That's the only option here. Nathan's got a good line. That is actually going to get smoked off, but he's going to relocate. Called out. Now Venom Zero, top of heart. Gets one before he's dropped. Nathan rotates on up. Now they know exactly what's going on. 10 seconds, not from the vents. This could just undermine it all. Slights locked it on the angle and actually 
The bomb does go down, waiting for Hazel to come through main. Stanislaw needs a phenomenal clutch, can't even get the first. Red Cannons with eight. I feel like that round in particular, that's a stark contrast. If you take a look at the way the teams are setting up, when it comes to the communication, wild card, they're hanging around red. They're by secret. They're not sure whether they go all the way down to clear the vents. What's the player in lobby got? Not too sure. So then you reset, you fight the main player. But Davideus is in the vent. He's just shooting. He's actually doing two things there. Trying to get Stanislaw off the bomb with limited time or bait for the player that then comes around hard down towards main. And from there, it's just so simple. They can group up. They can fight together. It's been a clinic so far for Red Canids. Yeah. Not too much to criticize. I don't feel it's anything exceptionally fantastic they're bringing out. Well, no, because they haven't really had to do anything. They've not really been limit tested too much. No. Outside smokes go through. See those on the radar. This time it's just infinite. Sent out to lurk. Well, the rest of the team is going to be going towards ramp, so it is might be tested here. And Sendry about to be dropped, holding the slither line. Stands very close. He's just able to get off. And in fact, he's feeling confident. Wanted to fight it for a moment, and he's still sticking around. The support is here from Hardtail. And that Molotov is so good at separating these tiers. They have no issue deleting everyone on rap. But again, uh, you've got to comment on it for wildcard. Sure, it's Stanislaw running through an incendiary. He's completely on his own. There's no flashbangs. There's people in towards radio and ramp that could support him. If you don't commit through that molly, then he's going to be on his own regardless. So at least throw a grenade. There's nothing there for them. It's so easy for Davideus just to fall off the angle. He can then feign that he's rotating down and you've got the player in from hell. In theory, these are all isolated gunfights, and they're ones in which Wildcard are losing. Yeah, Davide has just felt no pressure there at all. No, He none. drops the incendiary, and he's like, yeah, I'm just going to keep fighting. I've got support coming. Why not? It's it's really unfortunate to watch if you're a Wildcard fan, especially after you've seen the journey that they've gone through to get here to this stage. The fact that it was 3-0, the fact that it was convincing uh, against a, a number of teams in the closed qualifier, you have to beat what's in front of you, and they did so. Quite critically as well, it felt like they never really had too much trouble. But here, if you take a look at every single one of these rounds, how it starts, it is everyone grouping together. There's no essence of a fake. There's no essence of we're dropping utility to keep you interested at all. If you see one, normally you see the entirety of the wildcard roster. Have it in Serbia. Ahead of this RMR boot camping as well in Europe. Had some reps against the best in the scene. It's one of these teams as well. Um, I know the rosters are a little bit different now, but when they were over competing in Thunderpick, they had a boot camp before that event. They also uh, were saying to some of us that they had been practicing against European opposition. They were playing on high ping, but it was just to kind of get a feeling for how to defend against different executes and what to note for. So you know that they've been putting the practice in. It's just not clicking right now on the server. And unfortunately, that's when it matters most, Destiny, in the corner by the vent. However, this time the Tech Nines are getting some purchase. Davide is in from heaven. Sonic just running, knifing down. That's an AWP that can be retrieved. Three on two. This could be the round they potentially get. Davide is just taking wild fights there out from heaven. And he kind of has to do it all here because Venom Zero got dinked down low by that P250. He's going to regroup. And this pause. Oh, never mind. Slight. Perfect peak. Fully aware. And now Stan looks like he wants to jump down. The Sly gets caught. Stan's law is just patient. Behind Tetris. Does drop. Now Stan is not going to be heard, so there's going to be a bit of time that he has to get into a post time position. That's got a gun. That's the issue. He couldn't have grabbed one before he dove down the vent. Now Davideus has got a choice to make. Does he want to be loud? He's going to be. Resetting through ramp. That's not going to be heard by Stanislaw at the moment. Tucked in behind the box. Davideus needs to clear every single angle. He hasn't had any doors open, though. He hasn't heard the window breaking. So that's going to eliminate a lot of positions that Stan can be. And you can see, he's not worried about control at all. It's dark. Oh, it's the corner. And well, from the corner, Stan strikes. And guess wild card on the board. Yeah, what a time for you to get your first two two kills in the half. 
Right when it matters, just a simple Tech 9 burst out through the A site. Flashbangs there were a really good support network as well for Wildcard. You see they're set up for Sonic to just swing over at the vent here and then in towards main. Knife and not ready, couldn't see. And just by taking the slow down, they know that Red Cannons have liked to go for these flanks. They like to try and position together and establish crossfires. Slight swings takes that risk. And it's risks that pay off for Wildcard. But now they need to grab a couple more in a row. They need to give themselves at least something to work with. One hand into this nuke map. Yeah, try and get three fingers in. One's not quite getting them in touching distance of getting a comeback happening. It's difficult as well because there's so much money is built up for Red Cannons. It's going to be a buy oh, yeah. sort of every single round. JBA holding. Davideus spotting. Now it's probably time to fall back. All that distraction being, means that Nython, who's always seemingly over in the left-hand side of Garage, doesn't get punished and finds the opener. Yeah, he's honestly having the best time at Garage. Like, he's playing the most default or positions you'd see in, like, any matchmaking game. And he has no issues finding kill after kill. Can be given another option? No, Infinite on the line does eventually punish him. With Sonic finding Destiny, it's a three versus three. Hard out position. Counted four, and oh my god, he just slings around. They try and trade up, hoping that the orb shot was a distraction, but no, he was so ready for that swing. Now that 3v3 slowly falls apart and doesn't get any easier for Wildcard. No, it really doesn't. Spoke about the amount of times that Nython's been over at Garage, but even when they're dropping smokes to try and cross and deal with main players, it's being overlooked. And by having now Red Cannon starting players in towards Secret, the one line in which you just took some comfort in if your wild card is really starting to be tested and rejected at the form of the defense. Fantastic kills as well from Hardzow. Felt like I've barely mentioned his name, but he's been alive and kicking all throughout the server. Seven and a six and a half KD. Not bad. Bad at all. Well, two. Is that workable for Wildcard if they can get it? Bruce would say no. I'm sure there's some NA fans out there that are enjoying the fragrant fumes of the Copium. That going to be charging on through. Great utility sets him up. Flashback and the flames. Destiny gets one back. Make it two, make it three. Feels like you can find a avenue through. Oh, hold on a second. Slight has spammed one down. But the bomb is on the site, so they can't go anywhere else. And this reposition from Davideus is deadly. There's no way you expect him on this corner of Mustang, no, none whatsoever. And now as soon as he takes the contact, the AWP can move forward. Slight, good adjustment, but Davideus has once again moved straight ahead of the silo. 11-1 for Red Canid. It's dominant. Only way you can really describe it. Slow start for the NA squad here. Seen some moments. They've been able to get some space onto the site, but it just feels like the positioning and the communications from Rakan has just been so on point. Not a multi kills that have come through from all of these individuals. And that's kind of what we talked about briefly in, in the pre matches. The strength of the rifling core on this squad. Obviously, nathan has been having a pretty decent game, but it's not really felt like he's had to work super hard for it. But it feels like the Riflers, when put in difficult positions, like Destiny in that round, for instance, Davideus towards the end, even that ramp round four or five rounds ago, always have a step up for the multi-frag. I think, look, it's, it's not really relevant in this best of one, but it's an important thing to touch on. It's also the experience that Red Cannons have got as a roster playing together. Yes. Uh, even, even without, if you exclude the addition of Davideus, even though that came in in October, and we're looking at, what, a six months nearly, it's still been a very long time. Uh, these core four players, even three of Hardzow, Nython. Venom Zero, I think, was the three that went... Uh... Through, well, they didn't quite make it to the major last time. They they got they went two two. Yeah. Got beat out by Fluxo. There was that Fluxo liquid game as well for O2 in that major. In that major. Open for better showings here in Americas, not just for them but also for Red Canids, and they've put a fantastic first step forward here.
Because this game, it feels like it's inevitable. It's a question of when a red cannon's going to close rather than if Wildcard can come back. Yeah, definitely, definitely feels that way. And your red cannons, you want to just make this really quick and easy. You want to feel on top of the world after your opening best of one. Don't do a Furia. <laughs> Don't do a Furia, yeah. We've already seen one South American team choke a massive lead. 10 to half they had. They were able to close it out, but when they get to like 12 9 or something. Yeah, that was 10 2. That was yeah. a little bit less dominant than this. Knife and P250 in his favorite place outside, flashing over the top for Venom Zero to walk through the smoke. This is fast day. He's just walking through. Sonic aware of it, but can't find the kill anyway. JBA dealt with, and oh, well, this is already looking done. Slides in the heavens. Okay, he does get one kill back. But fighting out of here is so tricky, and Infinite's still clearing outside, making sure there's no late lurk. No kid on either of these players. Not sure if there's one on the floor of the site. Gonna give it a go. Flash on Ford, swinging over the top. Nice tap from Slight, and Infinite needs to find three. Time is ticking out of his favor. Make a start to swing one by one. Red Kane, it's 12-1 map point. And that's even in, in the case of, for this T side, just showing what Wildcard couldn't really achieve. Just the amount of contact they were able to play, even without throwing utility. They were just able to achieve so much by just playing off each other. Wildcard obviously going to have to force this one out. Okay, he's just bought five Galils, wanting to finish the job right here, right now. Outside Smoke's come through. Venom Zera deletes the scout immediately with his AK. Cross on over. The bomb is with the pack. What do you do if you're Wildcard here? Hope. Pray. Someone oversteps the mark, a recovered rifle, a bit of magic. Maybe an opportunity there, but Sonic playing a little bit passive. Has got teammates in support this time around. But again, the group hit over at Candice. They know they've got the rifles favorable to them. As long as they move together, this round is theirs. So two five sevens in the site. Five sevens can get uh, a bit of work done. You don't even need to commit to this, though. That's the thing. 55 seconds left. You've still got a player in lobby. You can reset. I think they're just waiting to see if someone gives them that kill. Making wildcards stew in it. This might be that kill. Venom Zero finds his. Spots went out towards Dark. And he's having no issues. JBA, one good kill. And Stanislaw falls, making it a 13-1 victory for Red Canids. Yeah, first class performance from them as well. I mean, it was, to be honest, incredibly simple. They didn't need to change up the way that they were playing. They were never really tested by this wildcard squad. And for them, now it's just a case of resetting. Fortunately for today, the way the schedule works is you've only got one best of one to play today. So sure, that didn't go...